what he tells. We are here, it is vlog number 13, and it's on a Model S Tesla. It's in for a new car protection package. Uh, it's the second Model S I've worked on, and it's the second one for the same chap, same customer, same owner. The last one I can't get into why it's no longer available or around, as it doesn't exist anymore, and I can't talk about it for legal reasons. However, this one's a much more practical, better color. Uh, the last one was flat black, which is a nightmare and uh, difficult to keep nice. This one is going to be better, hopefully. I like the rich royal blue with the gunmetal wheels. It works well. Now, the black one was very delicate. It was very soft and it hadn't been prepped that well at the factory. Obviously, this has just been dropped off, so it's dirty. So until this is washed safely and uh, across on the ramp, we won't have a true idea on the finish. However, already I have found areas of, if I can get some focus, have found some areas of denibbed sanding mark. So just around my light cluster here, there's the edge of a denibbing area with some light buffer trials around the perimeter. Uh, so new car prep, full safe wash, decontamination, bought inside, blown dry. A single stage machine polish to lift any sort of surface marring or marks that may have been induced. Uh, and also to eliminate the sanding marks from factory. There may be a few areas with buffer trailing. In fact, as we go across the edge of the bonnet, there are light machine holograms present here. And this is the facelift Tesla as well. It's the facelift model from the last one this chap had. There's a few abrasions over the top of the bonnet. There are some deeper scores on the offside rear wing here. And then on the very top, some more very faint sanding marks on the very edge of the wing. This camera can't focus very well. My camera is away for repairs. This is a Sony RX100 Mark III which I'm borrowing, um, so it'll be interesting to see the difference in quality. But for now, I'm taking the Tesla outside to start the safe wash and decontamination. Now I shan't be doing too much of the camera outside, because as you can see, it's pretty wet and miserable. But if I can perch you down here somewhere, you'll get a rough idea of the processes involved. So the Tesla's been washed. Moving inside now for the decontamination stage. Uh, third and final decontamination stage. It's had the tar removal stage to remove the road deposits and then iron fallout removal. Uh, moving inside now to be clayed and blown dry. Uh, key would be helpful. If you're yet to see a Tesla's interior, you're in for a treat. So other than that, and of course, that is the engine started. There is no noise, nothing at all. Purely electric. Column shift for the gears into reverse. And a massive great camera up. And we can do with the door going up actually, that'll be helpful. Going down, going up. Miserable Monday morning here. Inwards we go. So bizarre having no vibrations or no noise or no anything. Okay, that'll do. That'll do, pig. And that'll do. Oh. 
So now we're inside of the Tesla. It's been blown dry, thoroughly blown dry to eliminate all the trapped water and drips. We can start to take a proper look at the paintwork. Uh, I found one or two localized sander mark, areas of sander marks already. It's a bit rough down there. Hazy on the rear near side of wing there, buffer trails. Uh, lots of abrasions and swelling on the light clusters. All this sort of stuff is lifted during the new car protection package. Abrasions down here. This is the, these are the sander marks we saw a little earlier on. The gloss trim on top of the roof line is a bit hazy. There are very, very light trails here. This is difficult to correct. However, the right uh, methods and product that will be sorted. I'll show you the after footage of that later. Oh, <laughs> uh, so the dot is a defect in the paint. Let's get some focus in the camera. And then the cluster here, more sander marks. Plenty to get stuck into. So where possible, I will stick to the single stage polish, but where required, it will be bumped up to a two stage um, to lift the damage as required. That's a nice cluster, tight to the edge of the door. In fact, Christ, have they burnt through there? Well, I'll have to investigate that later. That looks quite flat. Naughty. Overall, better than the black Tesla I had in, which is this chap's previous car. So for now, it's stick the kettle on. Loads of abrasions going on here. Kettle on, music on, crack on. Whoa, ha. Cheeky buffer drills over the top of the registration. Even new cars need detailing. to the offside front wing. A bit naughty this. Uh, a nice cluster of sender marks right on the very edge of the panel. Now you can see the flat edge on the edge of the wing. This might take some shifting. This is when you're typically close to burning through the paint. So that's had a lot of pressure on the very edge. So what I need to do now is mask off this half, protect that edge and lightly massage as best I can this to remove that door spot and the surrounding haze. to be a bit of a funny week actually. Today is Wednesday, Tuesday. The power was off on site, so there were upgrades being done to the electrical circuits, I, yeah. But it just meant that there was no way of sort of cracking on and even if I had a generator here, I still wouldn't have the lights rigged up. So it was easier just to reallocate a day on the weekend to then catch up and push the week back a day. So it is day two on the Tesla and I've been across the gloss sections of the roof and down the driver's side, the off side of the vehicle. Now working down from the near side rear wing back and across. And you're probably wondering why the vehicle is not in the air at this point. Uh, obviously I found the jacking mode on the uh, system to, uh, to disable the air suspension to safely raise the vehicle. However, the jacking points are around the very edge, just above the lift as we looked there. And they're right at the very back. So I mean, when the lift comes out the ground, there is an extension bar, which comes across seven or eight inches, but it's still three inches short on the jacking point. If I show you, it's under here somewhere. I can't really see the screen. 
but it will either be a silly balancing act or a disaster. You can still get a good amount of correction and work. It's what I used to do for the first five years on my trade. However, it is quite weird because the first Tesla I worked on, which is the first generation, that was airborne. That was in the air on the lift. No problem, um, I seem to recall. So whether or not this facelift one, they've extended the jacking point system, I don't know. But anyway, a quick look over the two panels here, over the rear door and the rear wing. So you can see on the near side of the rear door, around this little spotlight reflection, there's a slight haze, ever so slight white haze, marring and holograms from machine polishing the factory. And as we go across onto the door, the sharper, clearer, brighter, true cut reflection on the rear wing. So on this panel, there won't be a great deal to cut. That will be lifted. That will be lifted easily on the single stage. Whoa. The very final stage is the polishing. I've just finished the tailgate, uh, but I couldn't help notice on the boot lip. Pretty aggressive buffer trails, more mopping marks, holograms, whereby a rotary polisher has been pushed across the top lip. I mean, this panel, when you see the boot closed, isn't on show. So it's not as though the buffer trails are exposed. However, it's an easy fix. A couple of passes over there will lift and refine to a nice, sharper, better, truer finish. This is a brand new car. Two minutes later, we have a sharper, refined, better finish. Um, and it's been a funny old week with Tuesday being, um, I did I mention it before yet, yeah, the power was off all day on Tuesday, so it was a bit of a, a push it a day back and I'm now into the weekend with the rest of the week's work. On Tuesday, I did get my business tax sorted. I got my vehicle tax sorted. I got my vehicle MOT to get a haircut. I got all my accounts up to date. So it was a much needed day in the office, um, to be honest. So then yesterday was finalized the machine work on the Tesla and the interior dressings and treatments with the glass protection on the outside. And today has been uh, the multi-surface paint protection. So the underlying base paint protection is there to act as a resilient base layer to help prevent marring and swirls being induced which is then topped with a hydrophobic coating to make it dance essentially make the water dance it becomes scared of water stays cleaner longer and is a doddle to wash i appreciate i haven't been through some of the questions in some time so i'll try and tick off i'm on the comment section here on youtube app uh how do you get gloss b pillars perfect i've a rotary polish and the Lisa Brazer combo um, still use slant more and checking. Yeah, I thank you, Chris, for the message. I wouldn't go at gloss pillars with a rotary polisher. Uh, the nature of the action, the heat induced, I would go straight for the DA, the dual action polisher. I found a combination now that really works. Some materials, some pillars are different to others. The Tesla, the pillars on the Tesla are, are actually glass, but some, what I've had in recently, the last car in was the Focus. They needed some work to rectify them. The one before that was the Porsche Macan, I think, or the Audi A6. Anyway, one of the two was a much better quality gloss finish, and it didn't really need the same correction as what the Focus did. DA, low speeds, keeping it slow, making sure you're uh, removing all the residue. Residue control is very important for gloss areas to make sure you're not pushing, marring the surface by pushing dust or polish into the freshly polished paint and a mixture of compounds and pads. I shan't go into too much more there. Perhaps I'll pick up on this more in depth later on. Uh, Jeff Foster asks, nice job, sir. I found the video because I own an RS4. Uh, would you mind sharing what ceiling lighting you're using? I like the square boxes. You can't really, you can, you can see a couple here. LED panel lights, 45 watt panel lights. It's a nice surgical, sterile, clean light. There's no frequency, there's no flicker. Previously, I've had the fluorescent tubes, which are great in spotting certain things, uh, but also they might, well, mine, they were cheap actually. My previous units, they just, the frequency, the flicker all day left you with a bit of a banging headache after 10 hours or so. Obviously with the uh, mobile swirl spotter and the trolley and the rig set up and you can see the reflections of the trolley, the four LEDs here, and there's a bigger tripod. Again, I'll pick up more on the lighting details in another episode. 
Someone asked if I can film the reactions of the owners. Maybe it will be fun to see. Yeah, I mean, it will always be a question that I have to ask before I do film them for sort of confidentiality. So I guess I know it could be a bit awkward, but I'll, I'll see what we can do there. Herp Derp on YouTube asks or says, curious as to why he opens the door hood trunk and puts in microfiber towel in there to lock it when he's polishing. Uh, so that he doesn't have to tape it. Yeah, it's you can buy the door jam mechanism So the rods that clip onto the door latch onto the door shut and it, it prevents the door from closing It's the same principle the microfiber towel around a one litre bottle of old men's air. It just protects the plastics either side of the door and the console, but it just lifts the door It allows you to polish to the edge without risking the second edge. Polishing the rear door I would slightly open it to allow better access down the bottom of the sill so I'm not having to go over the chrome strip on the bottom and likewise the dog leg down the rear wing I can do that as one without fear of hitting the door when I'm polishing the wing and when I am polishing the door just separating panels similar to when you're coating areas so if you're coating the bonnet I'd always raise the bonnet up and open it slightly or even open it fully and support it with one hand as I'm applying coatings so I'm not overlapping the coating onto the adjacent panels and having to chase around loads of residue just makes life a bit easier I love watching the videos in work process. Had to ask about your pressure washer. Is it a crans or handheld? It looks pretty powerful for its size. I've been contemplating the pressure washer before, but hate the large gas ones. Is a smaller one like yours in the video a good buy? Yes, very much. Apologies, I've not seen this come through before this message. It's the Kranzel K7 pressure washer. I've got a link to this in the descriptions below. It's I bought it when I was a mobile service, so in the, in the mobile days. It's compact size, allowed it to go in the back of my, at the time, a hatchback, uh, and then an, an estate car when I was mobile and chucking on the gear in the back. It packs a punch. I think the bar, the pressure is about 130. It doesn't need to be like anything industrial. You don't want it to be that powerful but the quality of it it's i mean it's german and it is just bomb proof it's had a couple of services it's due for another service actually just a basic filters um o-rings and oil but yes very much recommended they do do more upright ones which are very similar but just with a different chassis different body but the k7 i've had it ooh, five six onwards years and yeah love it what is the song at zero twelve seconds and someone else asked off car topic but what is the music being played on each of the videos, I have to credit the artists in the description of the video. So if you're interested in what the songs are, you can find the links to the artists, their SoundCloud channel, down below. Quality vids make what machine polisher are you using? This was on the Ibis White Audi R8 detail. I think it was vlog number four, which I'll put a link to up here. Audi R8, it was the Roops system. This is always the Roops. It's the Roops Bigfoot, the Roops Duetto, and the Mini, uh, the smaller three inch pad, the five inch pad. And occasionally the rotary comes out to tackle these smaller intricate areas with the extension bars. Reggie on vlog episode 06 asks, what is the stuff that you're putting on the B pillars on the doors? Uh, that will be crystal serum. So the idea of serum, it's on the Tesla, it's the base hardy resilient layer. I spoke about it earlier. It's there to help act against, uh, it's there to help prevent marks being induced as easily. So it just gives the top finish a gruntier, a harder, stronger, barrier. I speak on that episode again, link up here, about how you need to avoid contact on the pillars and if over time the pillars get bad if you are using them to close the doors. So serum is just there to give it a bit of a fighting chance. James Richardson, love your videos as I used to be a professional violator at an Audi dealership, not quite the same as a paint correction protection specialist, I know. P.S. My father was born in Boston, Lincolnshire. Does anyone know the name of the washing foam that is used during the first wash? This was on the recent 12.5 episode of the Focus RS. It will be AM Details AM Foam. There's a link down to this down below. I use AM Foam and then I'll occasionally use G-Technics W4 Citrus Foam. And then the last one for now. Datsun Ford asks, uh, nice detail, work wide details, but I would like your personal opinion about clear film on the pillars to avoid scratching them because if it seems over a period of time using door handles, yeah, absolutely. If you've got a PPF guy or someone that can apply film, there's no reason why film can't be applied over freshly polished pillars so that they it's an extra step above applying serum. So, an actual physical film over the pillar will be a better answer. So, if that is something that's possible, go for it. So that'll do. The diary now is into, today is the 19th of January and I've just booked the first week in June. There's plenty of nice, exciting bits to look forward to. 
And again, I will do more in-depth details, vlogs, video diaries, with the white detail, which is my sort of four, five day, six day restoration job throughout. But now I will whip you around the Tesla, show you some of the cool features on the car. Uh, if you don't know much about these, it's definitely worth looking at sort of suggested videos on YouTube that will flash up saying Tesla um, review. They are pretty awesome. So check it out and see you next time. The time is, I don't know, I'm late, I know that much. Picking the customer up from the local train station and I had a Ford Ranger in for some glass treatment work this morning. Ended up chatting just cars and just general for too long. Left me a bit delayed, I've got a VW Tuareg to prep for sale. Uh, so hopefully I'm not too late. for watching be sure to subscribe to the channel for more insights and updates in the coming weeks and months there's daily updates and behind the scenes on my instagram so go check it out uh give us a like give us a thumbs up and let me know your thoughts and comments below and until next time cheers